Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today I'm going to apply backward induction to the cliffhanger in between Season 1 and Season 2 of the BBC series Sherlock. Essentially, Holmes and Moriarty were engaged in a Mexican standoff, and Sherlock Holmes used backward induction to look down the game tree, see how his actions now will affect the actions of the others in the future, and by doing this he devised a brilliant way out of this Mexican standoff with his life. So the situation was something like this. A sniper, Holmes, and Moriarty were locked in a bathhouse. I'm going to use this S to represent the sniper, the magnifying glass to represent Holmes, and this M to represent Moriarty. The sniper was hidden up in the rafters on the second floor of the pool house. Holmes couldn't see him, but the sniper had his rifle trained or aimed at Sherlock Holmes, and Holmes had a handgun aimed at Moriarty. So it looked like that. Those are the arrows showing you where everyone's pointing their gun. And if you just look at the situation, given what you see there, it appears that Holmes is pretty much screwed. Moriarty is his only bargaining chip. The only reason that the sniper isn't shooting Holmes right now is because if the sniper were to shoot Holmes, Holmes could shoot Moriarty, and the sniper wants to avoid that sort of outcome, so the sniper isn't currently shooting Holmes. But Holmes can't shoot Moriarty because if he shoots Moriarty, then the bargaining chip is lost and the sniper can just shoot him. Holmes can't just leave the room because if he does, he loses sight of Moriarty, which allows the sniper to shoot him. Moriarty can't leave the room because once Moriarty has left the room, then Holmes loses his bargaining chip and Sherlock will be shot by the sniper. So that doesn't work. And it just appears that Holmes is stuck here. He's essentially going to die. Moriarty's probably going to die. It really looks like the sniper is the only one who's going to survive. And the reason that the sniper is fine in this situation is because there is no threat against him. The sniper is great because he's hidden from view. Holmes can't threaten him by aiming his gun at the sniper. And this allows the sniper to essentially have free reign here. And it causes this big old problem that Holmes really wants to be able to get out of. And what he does is he looks around and he realizes, yes, in fact, there is a way I can get out of this situation. And that's by changing his threat. Instead of threatening to shoot Moriarty, Holmes turns his gun at the bomb in the room. So there's a bomb right there, and Holmes, instead of aiming towards Moriarty, aims towards the bomb instead. And this allows this situation to diffuse, ironically, given that it's a bomb. But what goes on here is now that Holmes has this, this gun aimed towards the bomb, the sniper can't aim toward Holmes anymore because if, if the sniper shoots Holmes then Holmes shoots the bomb and there goes the building and the sniper dies. So the sniper now no longer has this credible threat to shoot Holmes because Holmes can shoot the bomb and there goes everything. And so by aiming toward the bomb Holmes has survived, Moriarty and the sniper can leave the room without anyone being shot and Holmes of course makes it out with his life as well. So the moral of the story here is Know that your actions affect the actions of others, and if you're really stuck and it appears that there's a no-win situation, try to think outside the lines of what's going on currently. See if you can sort of walk down a different path of the game tree and see if that path in that side of the game tree is a little bit better for you. And if that's the case, then just go along with it. And if you've seen the episode, then you know that what ends up happening is Moriarty and the sniper do, in fact, leave, leave the room only after an awkward phone call that involves staying alive from the Bee Gees playing on Moriarty's cell phone. That's his ringtone. It's pretty strange. The series is pretty good. You can check it out. And at least there's some logic going on in the series, and it makes some game theoretical sense, as we've seen here. It's pretty interesting. Go ahead and check it out. I hope you enjoy this, and I'll catch you later.